Hello, good people. Welcome back to my channel, Alex the Car Doctor. The doc is in today with another patient. It is getting a high pressure fuel pump because this is a diesel. This particular motor is the BEW TDI. That's the engine code, BEW. Um, that's just the design of the motor. Um, instead of the old design has the high pressure fuel pump right here. The BEWs, they moved it right here. And it's also the vacuum pump for the brake booster. The tools that I'll be using is an uh, Allen head. This is a, a six, number six. I'm my standard um, socket set, air ratchet, pliers, and I'll be needing a hose clamp for this particular job. I got my screwdriver. So the first thing we need to do is loosen up this band clamp so we can gain access to the pump here. All right, next step. I'm just kind of gaining access on stuff. Move this out the way. This job, I would rate this being a, uh, it's not that difficult. I probably rate it about a three. You can do this at home. And what I'm doing is I'm not clamping down real hard on my hose. I'm just kind of twisting it side to side because if I clamp down real hard on it, it'll damage it. This here is a fuel line. Uh oh, I'm leaking. All right. These look spring loaded clamps can be a pain sometimes. This one is going to give me a hard time, it appears. All right, I'm going to go grab some needle nose and show you guys another trick. I have my needle nose. Basically, what I'm going to do is take it, get in between, try to get in between, and kind of walk it off. Sometimes you'll come across hard hoses like this. And I'm trying to do, take it off without damaging it. So kind of trying to push it off while I'm pulling on it at the same time. I think I may be replacing this hose. It's not gonna come off willingly. Yeah. back up temporarily. I'll say the hardest part about this job is gonna be fighting with these hoses. At this point, I'm just gonna damage them or cut them off if they continue to fight me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut them off. Unfortunately, 
the hoses can be saved. Now, for the brake booster vacuum line, and I think it shares a vacuum line with something else. Um, this is a one-time use clip, so you have to damage it to take it off. So, just get up in there. It may just slide right off though. Let's try that. Not a very good clip. So I'm not reusing that. I'm gonna be using a, a um, adjustable clamp. All right, now I'm gonna look at the new pump. Should be one more hose. That's right here. This is yeah, this is right there. So the easiest uh, thing to probably to do is take it loose from right here because I can access it easier. See, can I save this one? What you think, Tariq? I think so. Ooh. She's fighting. I think she's gonna come. Jeez. This here is the fuel temperature sensor. I'm gonna unplug it because when I take the assembly out, um, I'm going to then remove it from down there. But as you can see, it's really no working room. So I'm gonna remove the pump, then remove that. Let's see. <clears throat> unplug the temperature sensor. That came out without a fuss. Next step is removing my bolts for the high pressure fuel pump. It bolts to the head. Like that. And when I remove them, I like to set them back in the new part just so you know where the bolts went. And I'm gonna need an extension. extension because you want to go in straight I was kind of crooked like so you don't want it to go in like that and make sure everything goes in straight before you start trying to loosen things up see but I'm feel for it Ooh, if I can feel for it there's hoses in the way that's it working blind is always a challenge It's gonna, it's two left, and it switch up. They switch up sizes on me because it's no longer a six, I don't think. Nope, pop my size down. This is a five. Let's try five. Yep, it's the five. <laughs> nice. All right, I have to retrieve my tool. I'll be right back. I retrieved it. Uh, this time it wasn't that hard, but you guys work on cars, you know how I can be when you drop tools, sometimes you never retrieve them. And the last 
one. Hopefully I can get to it. They do that to me <laughs> it appears I'm gonna have to remove the coolant neck just to get to one bolt yeah so. and this is the boat I'm trying to get to so what's going on, this is the um, coolant neck. It's like right there. It's covering it up where I can put a tool. So I'm gonna have to remove the housing, the water outlet housing. And it appears to be two 10 millimeters or maybe more. These are real problems right here. You know, nothing is rehearsed what I do. As you guys are seeing it, this is how it comes. I originally thought it would just come off easy the way it appeared, but it's more to it. So the time, I mean, the, the rating may change. I can't even retrieve the boat. It's so tight. And the reason I'm changing this, it is leaking oil. You can check out my last video when I was di diagnosing this vehicle. It was leaking oil from right there where my finger is pointing along this seam where the pump joins together. So I'm going to wrap a magnet so I can get that screw. That bolt. That with the magnet. Uh, I don't know if you can see that bolt, but just pulled it out with the magnet. Yeah, should be one more or three more. I'm not sure because I'm working blind. Light really helps. So guys, make sure you have the appropriate lighting. Anytime you're tackling a job like this. Oh, I think I got it, I don't want to smash your fingers. some coolant all right now I can continue removing my high pressure oil pump high pressure fuel pump not oil pump uh oh I don't blind it myself there we go up out of here so it's still not that bad i just wasn't expecting to remove the coolant housing neck but here she is i 
I thought I brought some rags with me. Okay. So I'm gonna inspect my gasket on my housing. Oh, it's in great shape. Yes, that makes me happy. I don't have to go out and find one of these. Now, I know it's in great shape. You can take your hand and rub it across the surface. If you feel like a hump, that mean the gasket is still protruding and it's gonna make a good it's gonna make a good seal. Now if it's flat, if the rubber has sunken down in the um, in the groove, it needs to be replaced. And I just dropped another screw. So I'm gonna retrieve that. The bolt's not a screw. Uh. Those are for my housing. So now what I'm gonna do is clean up my surface. Real good. Okay, it's about right. And I'm going to remove these. You have two options here. Um, this one is pretty easy, but if it's in lots of bolts, you can take these bolts out and place them back in the old part, just so you can just remove the bolt, bam, and you know exactly where it goes. But oh, right now I'm just gonna Put all the bolts over here because you can't mix these up there. Two big ones, two small ones, and the big ones is not gonna go in a small hole. So you can just throw them over there. All right. Now, this has a um, indentation on it. You have to line up with the, well, yeah, you have to line up the indentation on the block. That's actually the cam. This is a cam driven pump. Yep. So the male side slides into the female. So make sure that is seated properly. And this may take a little bit of filling to get it in there. I like these pumps because you don't have to time, or time, time them or anything like that. I know with the other style, you had to time, the pumps had to be in time. It's sort of almost like a game. You have to play with it. There we go. And you'll know it's flat down on there when it's flat here. And you can kind of peek back here to make sure it's flat against the block. So I'm going to start one of my screws. Next, I'm gonna put my two small ones in. Start those by hand. Oh, 
I keep losing stuff. This car likes to eat my tools. I'm gonna grab the torque specs for this vehicle. I'll be right back. So, torque specs. If you guys know, please comment down in the description. I normally like to show the torque spec. But anywho, I'm gonna show you guys how to feel for it. Um, if you have a long ratchet like this one, don't use the edge of the um, handle to tighten it up. Go down here and kind of wrist wrist up tight. Yeah, wrist tight. So I'm just using my wrist like so with my thing hands gripping it so that'll give me the appropriate amount of tightening for the size of bolt because if you overdo it you can easily snap them or strip it out because it's going into aluminum head now on the smaller ones I'm gonna approach it a little bit different kind of take your two fingers like so, and kind of wrist tight still. And do the same thing for the bottom. Because it's a smaller size bolt. And I've already kind of pre-tightened it, but I was just checking. Now, I almost forgot to transfer my line, my hose over. So I'm gonna do that now. There we go. Rick, you said it. it's gonna come off. You called that, buddy. Yes, sir. Slide that on. As you can see, it's, everything is nice and easy once I remove the um, that coolant outlet housing. So anytime you open up a cooling system, people, make sure that the vehicle is cold. You, know, you gave it a chance to cool down. Never open up a cooling system when it's hot. You have a very bad day. All right, and I'm gonna go grab some more of these. I love these type of clamps over the spring loaded ones so much better. Where is my ratchet? All right, now it's time for the housing to go back on, which is, I think it's gonna pose a little bit of a problem trying to line it up. where this little small light comes in at courtesy of to for Tariq you know courtesy of Tariq I think that's how they say it all right Tariq and it's a light <laughs> so what I'm doing because I can't get my big hands right there I'm kind of putting it in there and slowly pushing it through until it lines up and I'm kind of looking at the holes you can kind of see it better at this view. Uh oh, the light, man, lighting. But you, it's very tight in there, but that's how I'm doing it. I say this is the hardest part of the job messing around with this cooling housing. All right, so 
I'm gonna leave a little bit of play in it. So when I go to find my other hole, I can easily line it up. So I'm gonna feel for it at first because I'm not really sure where it's at. I think it's right there, which I am right. So it's time to open up my eyes on my hands. Hopefully I can find the hole because I can't see anything. That's always the hardest when you're working and can't see anything. And then at the same time, I'm trying to keep the, the, the boat in the socket, the tool. I don't want it to come out. I can lose it. I know you can't really see it on camera, but it, trust me when I say it's kind of a pain. So I think I will re-rate this job to like a five just because of the cooling housing. Now you can also, if you want to zoom out, you can show them this air box right here. You can remove this whole air box and it give you a lot more room. Um, I didn't do that. Me, I like, me personally, I like a challenge, so. And you can use mirrors, mechanic mirrors, and other things to aid you getting it in there. But again, what's the fun in that? And can't get it in the hole. There we go. Beautiful. Remember righty tidy lefty Lucy. And I can't access the the lower of um, the um the neck of the ratchet, so I'm gonna grab it with my two fingers or thumb and just kind of give it a, a thumb tight. I'm kind of using my arm to propel me forward. But I got my thumb right here. So the leverage of the ratchet and my thumb giving away kind of tells me a good point to stop, where to stop tightening at. So like I said, you don't want to over tighten these things. Not, not the camera, not the cameraman here. All right, that feels great. Alrighty. Don't forget to plug up your fuel temperature sensor. Oh, you have a check engine light. There's a coolant hose right here. Plug that up. Well, before I plug that up, moving ahead of myself, I need to go get a line for this. And get some more hose clamps. So I'll be right back, because I'm Alex, I'm never prepared. I think I am when I first start this stuff, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> I have my new hose. Make sure you guys use the proper type of hose because this is diesel or you may be working on the gasoline burner, but this type of setup is not on a gasoline burner. So we're strictly talking about diesels. Make sure you use the proper hose. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of size it up. I probably put the heart one on first. Good on there. I'm going in dry, that's not good. <coughs> Preheat the oven. <laughs> All right. Tighten this back. And you can also over tighten these as well. So, you know, be mindful. You don't want to 
Hey, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Be mindful that you can over tighten these. So a good rule of thumb is stop when it kind of start giving you a feedback type feel. Or stop when the rubber is starting to protrude through the little catch points. I'm not going to show you because I don't want to damage the holes, but guys get the idea all right so I'm gonna cut this approximately right here you can kind of see how I did this get your nice razor blade be careful I'm using razor blades don't want to cut yourself with that So I'm grabbing this very lightly because you don't want to grab it too tight and I kind of walk it up on there. Make sure there's no kinks in your lines, which that one is good. coolant clamp back on and come on you went on there you gotta go back I think it went right there all right last step well that's not the last step but one of the last steps of putting the pump on putting the brake um, vacuum line back on. Diesel vehicles don't produce vacuum, so that's why it's always some kind of vacuum source on diesel, whether it's an electric vacuum pump or a mechanical vacuum pump. This is a mechanical vacuum pump. It's just the nature of the diesel engine. They don't produce their own vacuum. It's an interesting fact. I thought I'd share with you guys. And the reason I'm struggling here because I really need to go find another hose clamp because this one is too small. but it appears I pulled it off in a way where I can't undo the, in a way I can't get to the, put it off in the way I couldn't get to the screw. So I have to undo it real quick and kind of reposition. So I kind of messed it up. I have to pull it back off. <laughs> Okay, like I said, good people, I'm not scripted in no type of way. I just tackle these jobs head on. It's very rare that I look at any kind of manual. 
it, it's very rare that I look at any kind of manuals when I first start these jobs. The only thing that I will look up is the torque specs. So I just use pure, pure experience when doing these things. And I'm not car specific. My favorite vehicles are Jettas. I'm an Audi group. I'm a VW group. Because VW have a lot of vehicles. VW, Audi. Uh, Lambo. Lambo. Uh, what's the Bugatti? Mm -hmm. Bentley. I think they use VW motors. So it's a wide variety of cars that they make. So the last step would be this little thing here. Sometimes these big clamps is annoying. But today, they're not giving me a hard time. Normally they do. The fat, or the fat got tongue tied. The last step is actually adding coolant to the vehicle because I took off a coolant line. Anytime you lose coolant, you have to add coolant back to the system. Use the appropriate coolant that does matter, especially dealing with um, German vehicles. Um, but that good people is how you install a high pressure slash vacuum pump on a 04 Volkswagen TDI VW engine code. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions can, pertaining to this job, please write them down in the comments. Alex the Car Doctor out.